Rom versus the Transformers Shining Armor is finally here. Hey, what's up everyone? James here and our coverage of the IDW Transformerverse timeline continues. Make sure you hit that like button. So if you are new here or need to catch up, the IDW Transformer playlist is right here and right below the like button. So before we delve into this story, I want to explain who Rom is. But if you would rather get right to the story, feel free to use the timestamps below to skip this part of the video. Now, Rom's history began like the Transformers at Marvel, but we won't get into that because it's relevant to this story. Instead, I will explain his IDW origin, since that's what matters in this series. So when IDW acquired the Rom license in 2016, they introduced a fresh origin story in Rom Annual 2017. Rom's home planet, Alonia, the capital of the Soul Star Order, an interstellar organization comprised of warriors called Space Knights who are dedicated to defeating the evil Dire Wraiths. The Dire Wraiths are creatures that are able to wield powerful magic, infect bodies of other creatures, and transform them into more of their kind. They're basically powerful parasites. The Dire Wraiths hail from the Dark Nebula, an actual place that coincidentally has been established within the Transformerverse, first appearing in the Transformers Victory animated series. It's a place where the interstellar clouds are so dense, no light source can shine through them. Rom joined the Order to avenge his family who were killed when the Dire Wraiths invaded Alonia. As for Rom's suit of armor, during his first mission alongside his love interest and friend Livia and friend Phyla, they encountered the Dire Wraiths. In the heat of battle, Rom discovered Alonia's supply of Ore 12, a liquid metal similar to Energon. It bonded with Rom, Phyla, and Livia becoming a permanent suit of armor capable of adapting to its wearer's needs and providing protection in any environment. Rom emerged victorious against the Dire Wraiths. Afterwards, the Soul Star Order harvested the Ore 12, offering it to Space Knights who volunteered to bond with it. From that day on, Rom vowed to erase the Dire Wraiths from the universe. And thus Rom, the Space Knight, was born. Don't ask me why I'm saying it like a cartoon narrator. Now in Rom vs the Transformers, our story begins in this area in space known as the Grey Area, which is a border region between the territories governed by the Galactic Council space and the Soul Star Order. One of the Galactic Council's warships is relentlessly pursuing a fleeing ship from a Cybertronian colony. The Council ship rains down lasers on the Cybertronian vessel, sending it hurtling toward an asteroid. Now I'm going to give a quick explanation as to who the Galactic Council space is and why they are attacking a Cybertronian ship. So the Galactic Council Space is a vast interstellar organization representing thousands of alien civilizations across the galaxy. They're similar to Halo's The Covenant. The Council's purpose is to maintain peace, foster cooperation, and address universal threats. Cybertronians are one of the few races that have been banned from joining them because their civil war has spread across the galaxy, leaving planets in ruins and getting countless bystanders caught in their crossfire. So Cybertronians have gained the hate and anger of other alien races in the universe. One of the reasons why I agree with Rodimus killing the Transformers in Last Bot Standing. Anyways, the Council Warship's attack on the Cybertronian ship takes them into the Soul Star Order's territory, which leads to Rom the Space Knight appearing. He demands an explanation from the Council Ship's captain as to why they're shooting down a vessel in the Soul Star Order's territory, and tells them they will be boarded. The captain of the Council Warship arrogantly argues that the Cybertronian ship attacked them first, but Rom isn't buying it. One thing we learn from their conversation is that Rom and the Soul Star Order have never encountered Transformers before. They only know them by their reputation. The main reason why is because the Galactic Council space sits between the Soul Star Order and Cybertronian space. Now disinterested in justifying his actions and not wanting to start a war, the Council Warship's captain orders his crew to swiftly warp away the ship when Rom gets distracted by signs of life emanating from the wrecked Cybertronian ship. Rom discovers a lone, semi-form protoform. For those who don't know, a protoform is the first stage in a Transformers life cycle. This protoform shows it's still alive. When Rom realizes this, he says, it is my sworn duty to do all I can to help you. This is where the story transitions to the birth of the Transformer known as Star Drive. Her name is so badass. Now from her narration we learn Rom had convinced the Soul Star Order's doctors to save her. The Order had synthesized the Energon Rom had brought from the Cybertronian ship to keep her fueled and healthy, nurturing her development. 
By her fifth cycle of living, she became so much larger than her classmates. It was actually her classmates who named her Star Drive because of the sleek cars she could transform into. The Soul Star Order taught her about everything they knew about the Cybertronians' tumultuous history. What she learned in her eyes was Cybertronians were nothing but genocidal mechanical monsters. The Order had told her if she can overcome her heritage, she might be considered one of them someday. It's because of how different she is and where she comes from that she's treated like an outcast by her classmates and other citizens of the Order. She's basically living Naruto's life when he was a kid. We see proof of this when one day during a graduation field trip to the planet Mato Grosso, she got left behind and encountered her first dire wraith. It was slowly killing her until Rom and the Space Knights saved her. Although the wraith managed to escape, this day Stardrive considers the second time she was born again. Her savior saved her again, and she was reborn with a fierce determination to join the ranks of the Space Knights. We then go to five years later, Rom accompanied by his fellow knight Livia and cadets Oxen and Sata are on a routine visit to this mining colony. Rom orders Sata to remain with their ship and she's not happy about it. Once Rom and the other space knights are in the mining colony, they use their analyzers and find many diorafes are hidden in the colony's population. The diorafes show their true forms and attack the space knights. A fight breaks out and it's just chaotic. Rom and Livia though, who are experienced knights, are trashing the diorafes that they come across. But the cadet Oxen doesn't know what to do. He chases a lone diorafe and falls into an ambush. He ends up getting surrounded and ganged up on by a group of diorafes. One of them here gloats, saying, Baby knight, the order should have taught you never underestimate your opponent. At that moment, hidden in her vehicle mode, Star Drive appears. And I love how official she is. She comes across as like Robocop. She says, lesson learned. I am Star Drive, Knight of the Soul Star Order. I am authorized to use deadly force. So the rest of you, please stand down. And of course, to no surprise, the Dire Wraiths don't stand down. They attack her and she just ends up obliterating them with her hand cannons. Like she's got the power of Exodia in each hand. It's so awesome. Now, Oxen does get pissed at her because the one Dire Wraith he managed to take down, Star Drive finished it off. He was pissed because this was his first official mission where he was supposed to get the glory of his first kill and she took that chance from him. And this is one of the things that separates Star Drive from the other Space Knights because she doesn't think like that. She's really the living embodiment of what a true knight should be. She tells Oxen that as knights, they can't take chances and shouldn't be focused on personal glory. Plus, she's been hidden amongst this colony for a week, laying a trap for the Dire Wraiths like they were taught by the Order. He's the one that blundered and almost got himself killed. After the battle, Livia suggests to Rom that they initiate an extermination protocol on the colony, in order to be sure they wipe out any other hidden Dire Wraiths in the colony. As we can see, the Soul Star Order Knights don't act very knightly. Sada only cares about getting into the action, Oxen only cares about obtaining personal glory, and Livia is so bloodthirsty that she's willing to wipe out an entire population of innocent civilians in order to be sure all diaries are neutralized. Star Drive speaks out against this idea, pleading that she became a knight to give everybody a chance to live like Rom gave her. Rom ends up agreeing with her, and this leads to a big argument later on the ship between him and Livia. Livia telling him that he wasn't so high-minded when the Wraiths killed his family, that he's been enchanted by Star Drive's emotions. Rom claps back at Livia, saying that she's become bloodthirsty, that he's never forgotten about that day, nor has he forgotten about his vow to stop the Dire Wraiths at all costs, but not to the point where he would become just like them. Later, the Knights arrive at a Soul Star Order station called Orchid Crossing that's in orbit around the planet Zetoxis. While Star Drive recharges her Energon in this fuel synthesizer the Order built for her, Rom and Livia disclose to her the true reason for their presence here. They explain, though the Order managed to destroy the Dire Wraiths homeworld, it has presented new challenges for them. The Wraiths have been fleeing into Galactic Council space and Cybertronian space. In order to pursue them, the Order has decided to open up negotiations with the Galactic Council. The negotiations would secure passage for the Knights to go into Council space, but in order to prevent the Council from interfering when the Knights encounter Cybertronians, since they kinda hate them, the Order has brought her here in order to show the Council, as Livia states, 
their ability to, quote, keep Cybertronians in their place. I swear everyone besides Rom has just been a dick to Star Drive. It's so messed up. Rom does his best to mend the situation, telling Star Drive that Livia meant to say her place is with the Soul Star Order, that the Order knows she's meant for greater things than the others of her race. In the morning, the council representatives, one of them the captain of the warship we saw earlier in the story, arrive at the station and meet with the Order's representatives. They quickly dispense with the pleasantries and get right to the point. The captain warns the Order that all civilization is threatened by the Cybertronians' lust for Energon. This is where Star Drive learns not only about Energon, but how all these alien races hate her because of her race, and she's saddened by it. The Order's ambassador responds that Star Drive will be their tool to manage relations with the Cybertronians, and kind of arrogantly mentions that they've already wiped out one spacefaring empire, and doing the same to another isn't out of the question. The captain says, be wary lest your arrogance be your undoing. The Cybertronians are a formidable threat, and I believe it unwise to declare victory over the Dire Wraiths, because you will all die by our hands. The captain transforms and kills the ambassador right on the spot. He and the council representatives are all revealed to be Dire Wraiths. The knights start fighting for their lives, and it gets even worse for them because the ship that brought the Dire Wraiths here is revealed to be freaking Astro Train. He transforms and annihilates Cadet Oxen. And it gets even worse than that. Starscream and a team of Decepticons come bursting through the station's walls. Knights are falling one by one. These Dire Wraiths have formed an alliance with the Decepticons. And we're gonna learn why in a second here. Also, the Dire Wraith that killed the Ambassador, whose name is Vectrail, Star Drive recognizes him. He's the same Dire Wraith that almost killed her on the planet Mato Grasso, which is giving her PTSD right now, making her useless in the battle. When Starscream grabs her, she pleads for Rom to save her, but Starscream quickly blasts him back when he tries to. Starscream is intrigued by Star Drive and attempts to entice her to join the Decepticons, but she refuses. So he straight up kicks her through a wall revealing the true reason why he is here is for Star Drive's Energon Synthesizer. He had deduced when Vectril had told him about her that the Order must have possessed one of these in order to keep her alive. When Star Drive says, you're evil, Starscream replies, oh, I'm much more. At that moment, a blast tears another hole in the station's hull. The Autobots arrive. Ultra Magnus and Bumblebee say, this is over. In her inner monologue, Star Drive says, No matter what I hoped and believed, my first encounter with Cybertronians proved everybody was right about me. That's the end of the video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you want me to cover the next part, comment below. Also, 80% of you haven't subscribed to the channel. Help me get to that 50,000 subscriber goal. I would greatly appreciate it. Other than that, have an awesome day. And always remember, every day to go beyond.